the fantasy ad with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of Fantasy Six Pack Net, and joining me shortly will be Kevin Hole, also a Fantasy Six Pack Net. Uh, escaping the wrath this week is Jonathan Chan. Uh, uh, but uh, I wanted to say something about Jonathan. He's uh, um, moving on up. You know how we have a moving on up segment. He uh, wrote his first article for uh, TSN, which is uh, uh, the sports network up in Canada. It's sort of Canada's version of ESPN. So congrats to him. Uh, nice little article. Uh, I'll put a link up for if, if anybody of, of our listeners who want to uh, read his uh, first ever article. Um, but he's not with us tonight. But Kevin is. Hi, Kev. How's it going, man? Uh, what's going on, Richard? I uh, hope you've advanced in your playoffs mm. or just come off a satisfying buy. And I uh, hope all our listeners have had the same. I am coming off a satisfying buy. Um, everybody looks good. Nobody got hurt. I think that's one thing. When you're in a bye week, uh, you just hope that nobody gets hurt because then you you know it makes your uh, following week uh, not too pleasant. And that's kind of like for people with Mike Evans or Marvin Jones or some of the other guys that just uh, fell off. Uh, uh, Rashad Penny, of course, is gone now, and lots of guys injured uh, right at the gate. So. Um, in fact, in our fantasy six pack league, Rashad Penny went down and it lost the playoff matchup, uh, the, between the matchup of, of two people who are, I'm going to be playing this week. So, but, uh, I'd rather be in a big league like you are. Um, it must be fun still being in the Scott Fishbowl. What are you, ch- how do you like your chances in there? Yeah, um, I just snuck in ten a top ten finish, top 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 ten in your conference advance, and I finished tenth by about five points, and I'm pretty satisfied with that. I had to make some, I had to make some pretty bold moves just to get in. Uh, went with Jacoby Brissett over Kyler Murray, and then I went with Ian Thomas over I think like Bo Scarborough and and some other uh, Latavius Murray. Worked out for me. Um, I don't know. I don't know how my chances are, to be honest. It's kind of weird. Uh, this one is top. It's just the top score out of all these 10. All these guys have stacked teams by now. So it's, you know, um, just hope my guys come through. <clears throat> now, when you're playing up against, you're playing up against pl- teams that also have players that you have as well, right? Yeah. I think at least uh, three guys in my league have Christian McCaffrey as well. Mm, not helpful, and he's due. Uh, he's due for a touchdown explosion. He hasn't had one for a while, and he's been people have been riding him for the yardage and uh, and uh, receptions lately. So, yeah. so he's kind of due for a bit of a, a bit of a tee, uh, some touchdowns. Uh, but we'll be talking about his uh, matchup with the Seahawks a little bit later. But first, let's get into the news, Kev. Um, let's uh, talk about Spygate 2.0. Um, now this is the story. The, the Patriots, what they did is that they videoed uh, some one of their a crew that were associated with the uh, the Patriots went over and they filmed the well, videoed the Bengal sideline. It was only about ten minutes <coughs> long or something like that. But um, apparently, it's against the rules to do this. And uh, the crew said they were just doing it for uh, for. Um, scouting purposes or something like that or so like it was kind of like a almost like a team uh you know public service type of thing that was their excuse but um well anyways they've been caught and so now it kind of dredges up this whole thing like with with the things the patriots have done in the past like back in 2015 you know spygate one was uh, kind of controversial, similar thing, and and then of course you had the deflated footballs and all that stuff with the calls and stuff. So, Kev, um, where they got, I think they got fined two hundred and fifty thousand for I, all told. It was nearly a, a a million bucks the team got uh, uh, charged with. So, uh, what do you think is happening with uh, this, and how is it going to go forward, or? What what are they going to do to the team if if this is I mean because this would be a second violation so if this does balloon into something bad what 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 do you think the league will do or do you have any um I mean to be honest I like to clown the Patriots as much as anyone else but this is this is a non story to me like this is just such an obvious like it's such a big mistake or like such an obvious mistake that I can't imagine that they did it on purpose um like and from the explanation we got like it's part of a mini series that they do like every week 
it just happened that um, you know it's it's not related to the football ops at all. So um, you know, I'm willing. I, I know it's hard to give the Patriots the benefit of the doubt because they're the Patriots, but I think you you kind of have to. I don't think Belichick is stupid enough to. I, if he's going to cheat, he's not going to cheat this way, especially after being ding so many times in the past. I think this is a non-story. It's fun to make jokes, and I will make jokes. I've already made jokes, um, but I can't imagine it's really going to end up in some kind of punishment. <laughs> no, I. I... I think there is some uh, validity. I mean, after all, it was only like 10 minutes. and I mean, what are they filming? What are they going to get out of it? Nothing. It's against the rules, yes. But it's, it's. I don't know if it's a, I don't think, like you say, I don't think it's a purposeful misstep. But Right. Um, I think that's why, I think a fine is enough. I don't think that you're going to, um, like, we're, we're, taking, we're talking draft picks or anything like that. I think you just give them a fine and get it over with. But you see a lot of people are saying like, oh, yeah, they just happened to get caught this time. You know, what have they been doing all season? You know, because it is just the Bengals and, you know, the Bengals are, are scraping the bottom of the barrel. They're, um, they're in the running for uh, first round uh, draft pick. So, I don't know. The the, the Patriots uh, really, they're good enough to, to beat the Bengals. Although their offense really sucks and they've really sunk in the power rankings on uh, various sites that do that measure so i don't know how it's, how this is going to shake out but um that doesn't bode well for them going into the playoffs and of course naturally it just gives fans who aren't quite in the know who just read the headline without reading the story in full uh, gives them just some uh, extra you know voice for booing when booing the patriots when they come on the field so I don't know. Patriots are in trouble anyway. They got they got other things to worry about than Yeah, than I think this. the more important thing is the fact that they suck. Um yeah. I think if Jonathan was on the pod, I think he'd tell you the same thing. The offense sucks. The defense can only take them so far. Um that's a way bigger problem probably to most Patriots fans than, you know, Spygate two point as you called it. Yeah. Uh Marcus Davenport out, the Saints uh he's he's kind of a major player for the Saints pass rush. And for him being out um, are we looking at uh, this? Is this puts a big dent in the in the Saints for the for the players? This is really not really a fantasy story, but I thought I'd bring it up anyway because um, the Saints' defense had been looking quite good in recent weeks. But Marcus Davenport out, uh, it, it took a big hit here for their defense. Yeah, um, the defense is was like you said, it's a good defense, but it's you know scorable on as we saw the Niners do. I know the Niners are a good team, but. Um, I wouldn't say their offense is is top tier. Uh, I would say like, but in the beginning of the season, the Saints were really good, but you know they the defense has kind of faded towards the end of the season. They allow the tenth most points to quarterbacks. Um, they allow the third most points to wide receivers. They allow the one place that they do okay in is uh, they allow the fourth least points to running backs. So <clears throat> I'm not scared of the Saints defense at all. I think they. They play the Colts this week, and I think, you know, um, even without T.Y. Hillen out there, I think a lot of the Colts guys will probably find some success. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jerry Jones defends his uh, GM role. Um, he's been questioned. He's been he's been the uh, de facto general manager for the Cowboys uh, for three years. And now we know probably Jason Garrett gets fired. Um, I mean, if he... If he, I don't think if he doesn't make the playoffs with the Eagles somehow uh, beat the Cowboys for the for the Sweat Hog division, uh, he's definitely out. But he, he definitely Jason Garrett will be fired even if he wins uh, the the wild card round, which they're relegated to. They're going to be in the wild card round no matter what. But um, but some claim Will McClay is the actual GM all these years. He's the director of player personnel on the Cowboys. I think that carries a lot of weight because I don't think Derek. I don't think Jerry Jones could make all the moves that that the Cowboys have made in recent weeks. But to tell you the truth, though, some of the some of the moves the Cowboys make, they I don't know, they got a lot of drug addicts and a lot of guys with personality problems. You know, you can look at you can look at a number of players: Des Bryant, um, Julius Randle. Um, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't think Demarcus Ware had issues, but but I don't know, Kev. Uh, this the Cowboys. Uh, do you think? Jerry Jones should is is he just a figurehead GM or is he the GM or how does it uh, do you think the Cowboys it's systemic starting with Jones more than Garrett? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's always like one of those things that you always hear is the problem starts at the top. Like with the Knicks, like it's almost whoever they hire, the problem is James Dolan. Um, Jerry's not as bad, but I think he is part of the problem. Um, like from his, first of all, just his unwillingness to fire Jason Garrett. Like that's his problem. That's not Jason Garrett's problem. Um, I would say he's, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if someone else was pulling the strings, like acting as the GM. But we all know Jerry has final decision when it comes to things like this. So, you know, that... If you call a guy a shadow GM, but Jerry Jones still calls all the shots, I'm not sure really how much that matters. All right. uh, a couple of injuries to talk about. Marvin Jones on IR. Um, that leaves Galladay with, I don't think it changes Galladay's targets, but I think it makes targets for who, Kev? Um, I mean, Galladay, like you said, I mean, Hawkinson was a guy who was popular week one, but kind of disappeared. Uh, I could see more targets going his way, but the guy I'm really looking for is Danny Amendola. Um, for like a young quarterback like David Blau, like you're looking for those easy completions. And I think they're going to be a negative game script again this week. Uh, facing, who are they facing? Uh, they're finishing the, uh, the Bucks. Well, Bucks. maybe not negative, but, um, the Bucks run the ball or they defend the run really well. So I could see, uh, a situation where they need to, you know, pass the ball a lot. So, you know, obviously Marvin Jones is a big part of that offense, but I think they do have some pieces that can make up for it. And then uh, the other big one uh, is Alshon Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey, uh, I don't know. I think he's in decline anyway. I, I think his, uh, he's 29 and uh, he's already <clears throat> start already starting to um, – his fantasy value is going to be very short next year when he returns. But as for the now, I mean, we've got White uh, – um, I forget – Forget the first part, but I know the last name Whiteside. Uh, we got JJ Arcega Whiteside. Arcega Whiteside, six, yeah. Six career catches and Greg Ward, who has seven career catches. Yeah, and Nelson Aguilar's banged up. Don't know if he's going to be ready. I mean, if if Nelson Aguilar is your best uh, receiver, you're in trouble. I mean, not not that I mean Aguilar's you know decent, but for Aguilar to have any kind of success, he um, he can't succeed as the number one. He can, he can succeed as the number two because. I don't think Aguilar can handle um, top flight coverage. No, he's not a prototypical one. He's more of a floor stretch or a, a, a field stretching too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll. Uh, I don't know if there's any uh, um, Eagles that you want to uh, to pick up. Uh, what about Ward? I mean, I'm not. If you're in the playoffs, I'm not really willing to take that shot. In DFS, like he might be worth a shot, but I'd probably even even go with Arthur Whiteside. Um, just go with the draft capital lean there. The one guy who does get a bump is uh, Dallas Goddard. Goddard. Um, yeah. Ertz is going to be there, but you know Goddard, of course, is just going to step into <clears throat> more more minutes, more touches, that kind of thing. Right. A lot of people had to uh, go with <laughs> go with uh, Ty Montgomery and uh, and uh, the old the old standby Blau Powell primarily because Le'Veon Bell went bowling <laughs> midnight on a Saturday night. Apparently, he had the flu, but um, he went bowling. I know. I know that uh, <clears throat> getting getting pounded by uh, two hundred and fifty to three hundred pound guys is a lot different than bowling. But um, if it's late at night and you're out bowling with friends and family, does eh, that show that you really you know care? I mean, or is this another tempest in a teapot sort of thing? Uh, tempest in a teapot. What does that mean? <laughs> that means is a is a, a mountain out of a molehill. Um. Yeah, I tend to think it's it's that kind of thing i mean he's speaking as someone who's his age which is actually crazy to me i always tend to think he's a little older but um if you know he was declared out i think on i don't know pretty early in the week right yeah um so i guess if, if you're not gonna if you know you're not gonna play like you get i think you get a little more leeway there i wonder if you know it wasn't even his decision to not play if that comes into effect if the team kind of you know not forced him to sit but you know told him like hey you know, um, we're going to give you a rest break this week. And, you know, I just don't I can't really blame the guy for being declared out and going bowling with his friends on, on a Saturday night. Like, you know, he, he, it, it'd be like if you knew you had the day off of work the next day going out the night before. I mean, is that really that crazy? Well, I, in, in a way, it kind of is because, well, let's face it, you're all bowling. What do you do when you go bowling? You have beers and drinks and everything, right? 
Mm-hmm. That's what you do when you go bowling, especially bowling at like at midnight. And and most people go bowling. Most people go bowling at midnight because there's a lot of league bowling that goes on during the evenings. So that's when that's when league bowlings have like their competitions and everything going on and in the in the evening. So that's why most people bowl at you know god awful hours. So because that's the only time the lanes are available to the public and stuff. So. Uh, anyways, well, I'll have a little bit more to say about Levy on Bell later, but, uh, let's get on to the, some of the games coming up with well, Thursday night tomorrow, Jets at Ravens. Now it's a short week and apparently Lamar Jackson, um, is a little bit dinged up, but he says he'll be ready to play. Um, I think it's still going to be a walk for him. I think he, I think he has a, I think he returns and has a big week. He didn't make the top 10 for the first time in weeks. Uh, last week, which is kind of unfortunate for people who own him and were hoping for a good start to their playoffs, and yep. still scored three touchdowns though. Yep, and he did well. Yeah, he just he just finished outside the top ten, so it's no it's no it, big deal. He didn't add a lot of rushing stats, is, and that's what you you kind of wanted from him. Yeah, um, really, uh, not much to not much to say about this game except that I I, I do think it'll be a the. Uh, Ravens will get on track. There not a, not a lot of big stats came out from the Ravens uh, against the Bills because the Bills pretty tough defense. The problem with the Bills, of course, is their offense. And so um, uh, the Ravens, yeah, they they were in tough against the Bills. So we all, I think everybody sort of knew that there would be. You sort of had to temper expectations with uh, Lamar Jackson. So because it was, you know, the Bills are Bills are pretty stingy. So. Um, the Jets are sort of stingy too, though, Kev. Uh, they, they could have their hands full because the Jets are in uh, spoiler mode. So, uh, but playing the Ravens at home, I think it'll, I think it's a bit of a walk for your favorite team. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about the Ra- uh, the Jets. Uh, their stats look okay. They give up the 14 fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks, but they've played a lot of bad ones, especially in the last three weeks where their stats look the best. Um, I'm not worried at all. I think uh, both teams are going to come in with uh, <clears throat> not much prep. And I think that really favors the Ravens because I think the team is just that much better. Who do you like on the Jets for uh, receiving? Do you think uh, Robbie Anderson uh, is uh, a player to own? Is he, is he startable in your uh, fantasy semifinal? Uh, I would say no. I, I think the Ravens really do a good job of taking away wide receivers. I mean, they've got a talented trio of cornerbacks. Jimmy Smith, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, and then Brandon Carr even as a fourth cornerback is, I don't know, probably one of the best fourth cornerbacks in the league. That being said, Marcus Peter is Marcus Peters does tend to be hit or miss. He makes some mistakes, so there's a situation where I could see Robbie, Robbie Anderson getting loose for a touchdown. But I don't know. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, speaking of the Bills, uh, who fell to the Ravens <clears throat> last week, they go and visit the Steelers. The Steelers obviously have a hot defense right now, so I think the Bills will be in tough once again, especially playing the Steelers at home. Uh, I like the Bills, but I think they're they're I think they're past their peak this season. I think they're starting to uh I th- I think they're trend starting to trend down just slightly. I'm I'm not saying just because they're off the Ravens game and they had that that uh, convincing win against the Cowboys, but uh, they and and I will say this about their game against the Cowboys. They actually put the Cowboys away, but for some reason they just don't have that they're just not quite they're just not quite into that level of they're, they're just shy of getting into that elite status, I think. Uh, the Bill, I mean, I gained a lot of respect for the Bills watching them this week. Like, they're very, their defense is very disciplined. They play uh, very, I mean, Josh Allen isn't, he puts up great numbers and he's really talented. Um, that being said, he's not exactly a guy who's going to go out and win a game for you. Um, but they don't really need him to be that kind of guy. I think he's good in the role they ask him to play. Um, and he's explosive. He's a playmaker. That being said, I, I don't I don't particularly agree with the fact that they're on the decline. I think they're still a good football team. I think they're legit. Um, it's going to be like an ugly game this weekend, though, because I, I, I think the Steelers' defense is really good. I think the Bills' defense is really good. This game is going to finish something like 14 to 10 or something like that, and it's going to be yeah. ugly for pretty much every fantasy player involved. Yeah, you can't really start any uh, – there's really not no good starters except perhaps uh, the running backs, but um, – <laughs> Nobody wants to start Benny Snell. Uh, James Conner apparently is supposed to be back. Juju Smith-Schuster is supposed to be coming back. Um, uh, for the Bills, uh, yeah, I don't think you really can start anybody. You might be able to, uh, if you're in half PPR, maybe Cole Beasley in the flex. But uh, as for Devin Singletary, as long as Frank Gore 
is in that backfield. I, I really don't think Devin Singletary can can shine. I think next year Devin Singletary will be. Um, I don't think he'll be exactly um, drafted as an RB one. He'll be drafted as probably a, a mid to high RB two, but uh, <coughs> but he's he's looking up. He's he's definitely looked up, and I think he's going to have the Bills' job next season. But a, as for starting him this this week, he's probably the best of the Bills. He might be the best fantasy player of the game uh, in t- in total. Um, so I. I I can't think of any other player that I would in the, in this game that I would start that I would think would have the most fantasy points. I think it probably be him. Apart from quarterbacks, of course, they, they always tend to get something uh, more. But uh, anyways, um, Broncos at Chiefs. Uh, this is quite uh, quite an important game for the Chiefs. They want to uh, keep it, keep advancing uh, toward. They have a chance for uh, um, for a bye week, so they want to keep uh, keep winning. This. Uh, I like uh, Drew Locke, Kev. I think Drew Locke's a good uh, a good quarterback, and I think he'll have a good game again against the Chiefs. Yeah, Drew Locke can play. Um, that it's hard to say anything other than that. Like he makes big time throws. Um, he seems he's a little he's a, just mobile enough. Um, he doesn't seem like he's you know too. It's the moment is too big for him. I actually really like Drew Locke. Um, I think this game has sneaky shootout potential with you know what I've seen from the Broncos offense in the last couple of weeks. What do you think? I do. I do. I, I completely agree. I think this is one of those games. I, I, d- this is, of course, depending on the weather. I mean, it gets it gets cold and windy in uh, Kansas City, so I don't, I don't know what the weather will be like in uh, in Kansas City. But it should be good. Should be a good game. I don't think there's any snow or anything going to happen, but um, it, it does kind of depend. It was windy last time. It didn't seem to affect anything in the Chiefs game. So um, the, on the other side of the Chiefs, um, this has really annoyed me because I. I was a big booster of Darwin Thompson, and and I actually like McCoy maybe even a little bit more. But Andy Reid gets Spencer Ware in there, and he gets twenty eight snaps, and um, McCoy got twenty two snaps, and Darwin Thompson got eighteen. How do you you just get a guy off the street who plays? I mean, he got he got total of, he got a total of two yards. Spencer Ware got a total of two yards. As basically the, I mean, just comes off the street and he's a bell cow. What, what's going on, Kev? What, what, I think, I think this is a backfield you just got to stay away from, even in your playoffs. You can't risk, not, not in fantasy playoffs. You just can't, you just can't risk any Chiefs, uh, in this, especially in a high powered offense like this. It's a waste. Yeah. Um, I, in the one league that I did the worst in, uh, I drafted Damian Williams and LaShawn McCoy and that tanked my whole season. So, since like week five, I've been out on the Chiefs backfield. I just got the feeling that we weren't ever really going to get a good grip on it. And it turned out to bite some people. I know, um, I know a couple of people who are counting on McCoy to do something or counting on Darwin Thompson to do something. And yeah, like you said, Andy Reid is, he's the new Belichick. It's just too unpredictable with his running backs. Uh, I wouldn't really touch any of them in week 15. No, uh, it's a, I, I still think you, uh, I still think you hang on to Darwin Thompson just to see what happens, but um, he's he is. If you did pick him up last week, you can drop him, but you can also, if you if you want to, you can stash him for another week to see if uh, if he gets more carries. But uh, one thing I've noticed about Reed, and he did this with Travis Kelsey in his rookie year too, is that he doesn't he didn't uh, he didn't subtly make uh, Travis Kelsey. Um, a major part of the office until there. Uh, that's the problem with Andy Reid. He's always he's always a next year thinker coach. He doesn't even think he doesn't think for the moment. That's why the Chiefs never go anywhere because they're always they're always thinking for next year, mm-hmm. which is kind of silly. Whereas I see on other teams uh, a rookie running back, they get him out there. They get that they get the kid out there. Uh, you know, right? I mean, look at look at Bo Scarborough, brother. You know, undrafted rookie, right? Get him in there, boom. That's, uh, uh, actually, I'm not sure if he's an undrafted rookie this year. Will be undrafted second year. I forget. Scarborough. Which. Yeah, Scar- uh, undrafted second year. <laughs> undrafted second year. Yeah, so he's not a rookie. But I mean, but y- you know what I'm talking about. There's there's other rookies that just come in and they just they just throw them out there and get like you know Singletary, right? He he played third fiddle. Like okay, granted, now the the Ravens aren't aren't exactly checking out the. Justice Hill out there because I mean Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards are doing just fine. I mean why why change you know I can understand that situation because um, if it ain't broke don't fix it right. So I mean if uh, Gus Edwards wasn't doing anything or or Mark Ingram was slowing up or anything like that you know if if anything was like that was happening you know John Harbaugh would 
would give uh, uh, just to show the ball, wouldn't he? Yeah, uh, I mean, to be honest, I've I've been harping on this for a while. I think a cheap running back is, you know, the way to build your team, basically. Like, I think giving a long-term running back contract, a huge running back contract to a uh, to any running back, no matter how good they are, is probably one of the worst things you can do from a team building standpoint because it's just such a replaceable uh, position. Like you said, there's so many young guys just coming in doing, you know, just doing well enough that it's it's just replaceable, you know. Um, and like you said, there's just so many guys in the league right now who deserve a shot. And for whatever reason, Andy Reid wants to go with Spencer Ware or LaShawn McCoy. Like I get it, they're trusted veterans, but. Um, you know, give give the young guys a shot. Like they've, they've kind of demonstrated that they can do something. Okay. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, bottom line for this game, like we say, it is a high shootout potential. I expect the uh, I expect a high over under for this. We'll see what that is. I I haven't checked it out, but I will find out. Uh, and you can actually read that in my weekend preview for uh, week fifteen on Saturday. It comes out Saturday. Um. Buccaneers at Lions. Now, I just briefly talked about Bo Scar. You know, Bo Scarborough, if you're in a standard league, not PPR, non-PPR, uh, he's pretty steady flex uh, um, starter for you. He, he hasn't been scoring touchdowns. He's, he's very, I mean, because he's only, he just gets ground yardage. I mean, he had one reception last week, but that's uh, something. He's uh, he's a pretty interesting guy, actually. He He's actually... He, he played for the Crimson Tide, and he's actually from Tuscaloosa as well. So he's 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 born and bred uh, Crimson Tide kid, eh? So uh, he's a pretty good player. Um, I watching him make his moves and that, but he's he's kind of limited as a uh, just a ground uh, just a ground runner, a good ground runner though. But uh, doesn't catch doesn't catch enough passes. It makes it kind of limits his fantasy value. Yeah, he is. Um, I remember when he was in college, he was the backup to, I want to say, Derrick Henry. And I remember seeing a picture of Bo Scarborough next to Derrick And he was big as hell. Bo Scarborough is huge. Like, if you look up his, um, I want to say he's like 6'2", like cut from stone, like 245, something ridiculous. If you look at any picture of him, like, if people thought that DJ Metcalf picture was impressive, like, this guy is a beast. He's 6'1", 236 listed. Um, yeah, he's a monster. So, you know, he's, uh, like you said, he's a Bama guy. They only recruit talented guys. So, um, makes, yeah, kind of makes sense to me that he, he's worked out. Yeah. Um, but with, uh, Marvin Jones out, uh, for the Lions playing against the Buccaneers, uh, we did already mention, uh, you know, the, the rookie tight end, um, who is out. I think, uh, isn't, isn't there a rookie tight end out for the season now? Um, yeah, Hawkinson's out for the Hawkinson's season. Hawkinson's out for yeah, the you're season. Right. So who are they left with now, Kev? Who can, who can we start? Is there any, do we want to risk have, it? I, I want to say they have Logan Thomas, the guy who used to be with the, the Cardinals. He's played quarterback, actually. Right. Uh, David Blau, I think the, the film's out on him, and so now everybody... Everybody knows how to handle him. I don't know who we could, uh, like you said, Danny Amendola is, I guess, about the, is the best guy. And, and, and that's actually not bad hands. I think Danny Amendola, if you want to put him in your flex for your week 15, you don't do bad doing that. I think you're right on him. He's a good. No, I mean, it's not terrible. You're getting the P- half PBR points. Oh, it's going to be okay. Yeah, he'll be fine. I think it's good. I mean, there's <laughs> there's other guys you can take shots on besides uh, Kenny Galladay, but uh, for deep threat, I don't know who it is. Uh, I haven't looked at the uh, depth chart. I got a depth chart right here. Why don't I take a quick look at the old depth chart for the for the uh, Detroit Lions here? See who they got. See who we're looking at. Like somebody I might have forgotten about just to see if it. Of course, uh, everything takes a while. My slow, slow computer. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, here we go. No, we don't. Oh, here it is. Coming up slow. So we got Danny Amendola, Chris Chris Lacy, Chris Lacy. This is the guy. I I, I wouldn't want to trust a no name though. When you ever whenever you hear somebody like Chris Lacy, he's he's always he's the kind of guy that you know uh, scores the. A big, huge, long t- touchdown like uh, like happened last week. A, a total, total no name guy got the longest touchdown in the year of the year last week. Forget the name, but damn, it's uh, impossible to say his name. It's um, the guy from the Falcons, right? Yeah. So, but uh, Chris Lacy, yeah, if you want to stick your neck out, but I think Chris Lacy's a guy. I think you know DFS. You might want to try a guy like that. You can get him cheap, I bet. So, uh, yeah. 
There's a guy. There's a guy. For, there's a name for you, but uh, you can't really start him. But I think Amendola, like you say, good sleeper, Amendola, good one. Uh, but uh, Jameis Winston, uh, a lot of he got a lot of yardage to make up for it, but he's still throwing these terrible interceptions. And uh, but you're still getting the fantasy points, I guess, which is which is the good thing. But with Mike Evans out, I guess, are we looking at Joe OJ Howard now? Yeah, I mean, two people. I think OJ Howard is is the one <laughs> is the one guy who. It'd be kind of funny if it came full circle. Everyone drafted him high, did nothing all season, and then in the last two weeks, he was everyone's savior. Um, another guy I'm pretty interested in is Justin Watson. Um, he was the most targeted wide receiver after Evans went down. Um, 6'1", a Penn State, former Penn State receiver. Actually has very good combine numbers, good spark athlete. Um, it's him or Brashad Perriman, and I hate Brashad Perriman from his time on the Ravens, so... Um, uh, I'm gonna. I'm willing to give Justin Watson a shot. I might give him a shot in South Fishbowl. It's getting crazy. Wow, that's bold. Uh, how do you like the? Uh, how do you like the scoring potential in this game? Touchdowns being a premium. Uh, I mean, come on. Anytime is Jameis Winston out there, and, and it's the Buccaneers. Um, there will be touchdowns scored. Uh, yeah. It's not really. Yeah, yeah, it should be a ripping game for. Uh, because I think the uh, the Lions, uh, the the Buccaneers are beatable downfield too. So that that could be a wild one as well. Texans at Titans, eight and five, big game in the context of playoffs, of course. And the Texans, gee, <laughs> Kev, what happened? <laughs> what happened last week to the Texans? Um, very poor performance, and and uh, no real good fantasy performances either. To, to that that really jump out at you. Um, I don't think any. I, I can't see any names. Uh, Deshaun Watson came in ninth. Um, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, he's always in the top 10. He came in fifth, and I don't see anybody else. Uh, and Will Fuller is out, you know. He's kind of like the candle that just shines bright, and then pff, it gets blown out. So, ah, but in I think the main guy in this game, and the guy everybody's talking about, is uh, A.J. Brown. Which, uh, you mentioned D, uh, D.K. Metcalf. They're both from Ole Miss, so... And they're huge monster guys, you know. Work out, you know. Did you saw you saw that picture, right? Of them from their from their Ole Miss days in the mm-hmm. uh, in the training room. Yeah, <laughs> those Major guys Brown. are freaks. I mean, this is one of the most talented wide receiver classes we've had in a while, and um, it's headlined by AJ Brown and, and Metcalf are two of the guys there. And it's no, it's almost no surprise given how physically talented they are. Yeah, uh, and Corey Davis. Uh, a lot of people were saying, you know, have you should pick him up for the playoffs, but he's not doing Why? anything. It's AJ Brown. AJ Brown's a guy. Yeah, there's almost no reason to pick up Corey Davis. No, uh, you're just you're playing with fire there for your playoffs. Uh, looks like a good game too. It could be uh, high scoring. Right, Ryan, T- Ryan Tannehill's, you know, taking over from uh, Marcus Mariota. Which which brings a question: Where do you think Marcus Mariota ends up next year? He's going to be a backup somewhere, I guess. Um, I don't. I can't see him being a number one somewhere unless some coach wants no. to take a chance on him. But I see him being a backup somewhere. But mm, uh, I think his I think his days as a starter are pretty much over. Yeah, I could see him um, either being a backup for like a really good quarterback or potentially taking over for like or getting into a quarterback competition with a young guy, kind of like a bridge quarterback. If yeah. Philip River moves on from the Chargers, I could see him in LA. Um, That'd be a good spot. I, see, I, I see him somewhere like that, yeah. Come on. Um, Dolphins at Giants, two teams that are out of it. But in games where teams are out of it, we might we might be seeing since uh, Daniel Jones is week to week. Um, and this is exactly to the point, and a lot of people were mentioning this too as well. I think even Booger made a good point. Believe it or not, Booger McFarlane made a good point. He said that the reason they made the switch to Daniel Jones is – the rookie contract, you might as well, you know, use him while he's free. You got this, you know, free usage. and But Eli uh, didn't look good. Granted, the Giants are missing a lot of parts. And I don't know who you can start on the Giants. You can start Saquon Barkley, but even he is a very um, – he's not reliable this year. Probably along with Alvin Kamara, he's, he's, too, he's one of the two uh, running backs you drafted high, and they just not panned out. So if you – if you have Saquon Barkley, I guess you're starting him, but not happily. Yeah. Um, it's one of those times. There's the talent. You know, the talent wins out at the end of the day. Like, you're going to start those guys almost no matter what. 
But yeah, it's been a disappointing season for them. But for the Dolphins side, like a lot of people were banking on uh, Devontae Parker, and I knew he would crash and burn. Oh, he got hurt. Oh yeah, right. He got yeah. He but, got hurt for mid first quarter. Yeah, hard, but hard to really blame. well, that's I I know I guess I guess that's bad uh, bad way of putting it, but but he but he crashed out of the game so. And that's uh, that's that's a bit disappointing. I mean, because it's kind of like the Seahawks. Which, but uh, is there any uh, Giants that you particularly like in this game? But with, uh, I guess, is is Darius Slayton the guy? That's the guy. Yep, Darius Slayton. Give me Darius Slayton against the Dolphins. Uh, I'll even take Golden Tate. Sterling Shepard probably not so much, but um, he might not be playing yeah. again. So. Yeah, but um, give me give me give me Dar- Darius Slayton. That guy's good. Whether it's Jones or it's Eli, he's he's pretty good. Is there anybody we can start on the Dolphins? Oh, Patrick Lyard. That's the guy. Um, <laughs> really? Patrick sure. Lyard. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The guy is, uh, he's playing the majority of the snaps there. Um, he's catching balls. He's, I mean, he's not a great, he's, he's a wide, he's a running back three, you know. Um, if you need him, he's startable, I think. He gets the majority of the snaps, like I said, probably good for probably 56 yards rushing. And then he catches balls too. And in half PPR, if he catches five balls, that's pretty valuable. Hey, uh, Seahawks. And Alan Hearns. Alan uh, Hearns is uh, by default somehow back into the fold. Right. Um, Seahawks at Panthers. Uh, we're looking at uh, a bit of a down week for, well, not a bit of a, quite a, quite a down week for uh, Russell Wilson. The Rams always play tough against the Seahawks, so I sort of half expected them to uh, lose that game, but. Um, I, I do think there's a there's there's gonna I do think Russell Wilson will bounce back. Um, he's he's definitely lost the uh, MVP I think to Lamar Jackson. I don't think there's any there's any way back for uh, Russell Wilson to get back into that race now. I think Lamar Jackson has it, but that doesn't mean that uh, Russell Wilson won't uh, put in the effort. But without Rashad Penny, um, it's all Chris Carson now. And I think if you own Chris Carson, you've got uh, You've got a bell, bell, bell cow deluxe. That's a that's a good way of putting it. Uh, Chris Carson's stats with and without Russ, um, Rashad Penny are are ridiculous. He's uh, you know one of the I think he's over twenty two average points without Rashad Penny, and they don't really have a third guy who they really turn to. I think Procise is their guy. I mean they. It's going to be the Chris Carson show. Yeah, um, and I think they're, Wilson, they're keeping Travis Homer. I think on further returns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he might get some snaps, but it's nothing I would really bank on. And since, um, I mean, Wilson's been good, but he's kind of been hit or miss. Uh, he's had a, a lot of huge games, but since week six, he's got one game over thirty nine points, and every other game he's been under eighteen. Uh, he's, I mean, he could. I mean, I wouldn't count Russell Wilson out in any means. Like he could always go off, but. Um, he's not exactly like a fantasy stud that, you know, that he like was. No, uh, he's definitely fallen off since the first eight games. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but he can, he can sure put him up. But, uh, one thing I've been kind of concerned about, like on the Panthers side, though, is, uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey, they might scale back his workloads since they're getting, into, since, since the Panthers are out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the only thing that, uh, is optimistic for him is that he has, uh, personal records to look at. So yeah. he might insist on being, and that's the that's the only thing that you're kind of hanging on because I think if Christian McCaffrey was well outside the uh, uh, yards from scrimmage or rushing title, I think uh, I think the uh, Panthers would start mothballing him a little bit. Uh, what with the coaching change and all coming up? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think McCaffrey is someone who. That's def- that definitely applies. Uh, at the same time, like even if they curtail his work, like he's such a good player, and they use him in so many different ways that I'm not sure it matters too much. Like he caught, he had 12 targets and he caught 11 of them last week. Like that's an insane efficiency, and it's just so such a good floor for fantasy. Yeah, and that's why when he doesn't score touchdowns, you still uh, you still right, get yourself right. a level week out of it. He, yeah, he basically has like a quarterback, floor, like a 20 point floor. Yeah. Uh, Bears at Packers. Um, before we get into the fantasy side of it, are the Packers, um, do the Packers belong in the, a lot of, this is the question that people come up, uh, that's come up and that is whether or not the Packers at 10 and 3, just because they're 10 and 3 doesn't mean they're an elite team. Are they an elite team for the, are they, um, are they, are they true Super Bowl, uh, are they true Super Bowl threat? 
Um, I would say no. I, I mean, it just seems like every time they have like a good opponent or like they have this chance to make a statement, they they don't play an impressive game. Um, you know, like they they completely belly uh, they completely face planted against the Niners. Um, yeah, it's just it doesn't have the feel of like a like when you watch them, it doesn't feel like they're a dom team. They couldn't put the Redskins away this weekend. Um, I don't know. I don't. I, what do you think? You're the you're the Packers fan. Well, that was my concern too. I just don't think they can put away teams. And like you say, um, uh, scoring eight points to what forty five to eight against the Niners, and it was like, gee, this isn't Aaron Rodgers. This he's not getting the protection. And not only that, uh, Rodgers usually can uh, break uh, break contain and and uh, rush out of the pocket for because I mean he's he's okay with his legs too. But um, he's not quite as good as he has been in years past. Like even just last year, he was starting to. But I don't know. He's, the injuries are starting to pile up. The age is coming. I can feel it that the Packers. You know, he's he's starting to become. Uh, he's starting to get into that. He's starting to get in that old zone, which is not not good to see. But ah. Aaron Rodgers was always Aaron Rodgers. is always going to be a threat, and he could come on. The team could come on. I think the problem with the Packers is that they've never had that uh, true number two emerge. They just don't have – I mean, Lazard has been picking it up, um, but – but there's no wide receiver too you can really trust in fantasy apart from Devontae Adams this year. Last year you could trust uh, Geronimo Allison to a point, but in fantasy, if you're trusting Lazard, you're it's it's kind of hit or miss with that. You and even with Devontae Adams, um, what with the running game as it is, and Aaron Jones, um, I mean, when you they're throwing to him a lot and he's getting touchdowns. And that's kind of taken away um, the touchdown count from Devontae Adams because, and not only that, um, it's taking away from Aaron Rodgers too because the running game is doing so well because Jamal Williams is in there. He's having a good year himself. And this is kind of taken away fantasy points from, from Aaron, from Aaron Rodgers because all Aaron Rodgers has to do to get the touchdown is just hand it off to Williams or, uh, Aaron Jones or throw it to them but uh but he usually hands it off and they're doing the job what they're supposed to do and that score touchdowns when they get the ball inside the red zone like inside the 10 so and uh that of course hurts um you know uh the receivers especially Devontae Adams but on the good side Devontae Adams still getting the targets still getting the receptions and still getting the yardage so he's okay uh as long as he's healthy and he's um he had a bit of turf toe this year but uh we're all pretty good. As for the Bears side of things, ugh, you can't trust Trubisky. You don't know what's going to happen when, when they visit Green Bay. You can't trust David Montgomery. David Montgomery was one of my uh, kind of sleeper picks, a guy that would take you into the playoffs. I mean, now he's he's a uh, he's a rookie guy that uh, they just threw out there, you know, but uh, he hasn't really shown a lot. He's shown some sparks, but I don't know what it is about the Bears. They're just, uh, they're not quite there. But I do like I do like Anthony Miller emerging. I think he he's a good he's a good starter for fantasy playoffs. Yeah, I think you can trust him in fantasy playoffs. I'm not a big fan of the Bears' offense. Um, something about them just kind of uh, I think it might be the coach there kind of rubs me the wrong way. Um, seems like he's just trying to get too cute with it. Um, but yeah, Anthony Miller is a he's a pretty good play against uh, the Packers' defense. I'm not really particularly scared of him. Yeah, Matt Nagy, uh, yeah, he's. He's not the great. Well, I will say this: he's better than uh, uh, Adam Gase for the for the Jets, you know, by far. I mean, that that's not saying much. Well, no, it isn't. But just I don't know. They, to me, they're kind of similar kind of guys. <laughs> uh, here we go. This is this one's for Jono. Uh, Patriots at Bengals. Uh, this is this is pretty much uh, Patriots have to make a statement here. Obviously, start all your Patriots. Um, that are uh, <laughs> that are left on the field. That is, I think Jacoby Myers and Kale Harry. It's a bit too soon for him, but Jacoby Myers. It's not too soon for him. Um, I, I like Jacoby Myers as a sleeper this week. Okay, uh, I I go the other way. I like Nikhil Harry. I mean, I think he he should have had that touchdown. That was a definite touchdown. Terrible call by the refs. Um, yeah, I actually like Nikhil Harry because I think he plays the kind of big body role in the red zone that they kind of need that they've been missing. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Uh, uh, whereas Jacoby Myers is kind of a finesse type of player. Right, I mean, I, I think like they can move the ball down the field with James White and um, Jacoby Myers. I think they're good for that. But I think as soon as they need to go get in the end zone, um, that's where they're hitting a little bit of a struggle. And I think that that's where uh, 
Harry can help out a little. Sony Michelle. Sony Michelle is not good at football. Sony Michelle is. Uh, Joe Mixon's good at football, though. Think he um, think he'll give a spark to the uh, Bengals side of things. Is there any hope for? Can we start any Bengals uh, in this game? I think Mixon is the only one, and I think it's um, you know you just you start a talented running back, and no matter what the matchup is, it's kind of can't really do anything about it. Uh, I want to. I wouldn't really bank on too much because it is the Patriots. It's a bad offense and the Patriots good defense. That being said, Mixon is the focal point of that offense. Um, you know, it's uh, Andy Dalton's competent. He'll get. He'll be able to move the ball a little bit. And I think Mixon. I mean, what you're bas- basically hoping for is something like 100 total yards, whether it's through the uh, and, and he catches the ball, so that's good. 100 total yards, and you pray for a touchdown. Yeah, uh, Bengals. They uh, they go from famine to feast because they'll they'll play Miami next week. So um, I kind of predict John Ross will go off in Week 16. So I think John Ross will be a great start. Hang on to hang on to John Ross. For your week 16 final, if you want to uh, pull a sh- pull off a shocker, because I think he's the big, uh, I think he goes off against the uh, Dolphins. Not this week, but uh, they eased him back in last week, kind of expected after coming off IR, but I think uh, it'll come together for him, and I think the Bengals will have a good show against the, the Dolphins. Sector. But next week is next week. Uh, Eagles at Redskins. Uh, Boston Scott had a big game. He actually sparked the uh, Eagles, um, such as they were. They were absolutely awful, but they but they came away with the win, which is all they had to do uh, against the Giants. Um, I mean, they barely won, but they did it. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about the Eagles. Um, Miles Sanders couldn't do anything. It was just ugh. Just, I don't know, just awful. But against the Redskins, poor run defense. So, uh, could be a better day for Miles Sanders. And Jordan Howard might be back. So, um, but I think uh, Boston Scott has earned some backfield time because of because of what he did uh, against the Giants. So, I don't know whether uh, they ease Jordan Howard back in or Jordan Howard resumes his sort of uh, um, bell cow uh, draw play um, split with uh, Miles Sanders or what. But. Uh, do you think uh, people are rushing out to get Boston Scott, but I think they need to hold their horses there. Yeah, I, I think it's a crowded backfield and, you know, Boston Scott's nice and he put up some numbers, but that was kind of in like a, a scramble situation where they had so many guys go down that week or that game that, um, you know, I don't think they anticipated using Boston Scott like that. And I think as they're healthier, they're, they're not going to use him like that. They don't want to use him like that. Mm, what about on the, on the Redskins? No, Darius Geis is hurt. <laughs> A guy just who was just starting to uh, moving on up. You know, he was moving. I think he was on our moving on up last week, but eh, he's falling off the wagon again. So, um, is there anybody we can start on the Redskins with uh, Dwayne Haskins? Um, I think the two guys that I'm looking at, uh, Adrian Peterson. I think you just got to give him a go. Um, it is what it is. Yeah, he's old. Yeah, whatever, whatever. But the Eagles are again not to be feared. Really, um, the other guy is Terry McLaurin. Um, he's been bad i mean there's no other way to say he's been bad with Dwayne haskins on your center but the eagles matchup i mean we saw what darius slayton did to them the eagles have given up the fourth most fantasy points to wide receivers this season and they've given up just huge games to wide receiver ones um darius slayton had 154 two touchdowns last week Devontae parker 159 two touchdowns the week before stefan diggs had 167 three touchdowns Devontae adams had 108 yards Julio, 106, two touchdowns. Uh, Marvin Jones, 101 in a touchdown. And Terry McLaurin, actually, I didn't even see this. Terry McLaurin had 125 in a touchdown in week one against the same team. So um, Philly, is their secondary is terrible. So I think Terry McLaurin is actually a good start this week. Hmm. Uh, Even with uh, Dwayne Haskins under center, huh? Yeah, even with Dwayne Haskins under center. I think you give him a shot. Um, Like McLaurin is, uh, he's still going to get, you know, five to seven eight targets maybe he's caught a touchdown last week um outside of carolina in week 13 he's averaged about 65 yards with haskins so it's not terrible i mean with with a good matchup i think you bump him up to about the wide receiver for four range uh browns uh, oh i did one thing about the eagles oh yeah we we, we kind of touched on this with uh Alshon jeffrey anyway we we know that uh we touched on the uh Wide receivers you don't need to hash that order over again. But anyways, Browns six and seven at Cardinals. Browns still uh, with a very very outside chance of making the playoffs. Browns are just I don't know. They're still the Browns. They have that. They still have the personality of the old Browns. The Hugh Jackson Browns is something like it's almost like uh, 
You know, it's sort of like a fart that somebody had five minutes ago and it's still hanging in the air. Jesus. <laughs> I know. <Okay. laughs> All right. You can go but, with that. Why not? Well, why not? I mean, it's the best It's the best analogy I could come up with at, at, at sh- on short notice. <laughs> but uh, uh, but the Browns, it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's... I don't know. There's a cloud over the Browns. It's just... They they have all the parts. They have all the parts of, and all the makings of a good team, but they're not a good football team. They've got all the parts of being a good football team, but they're not a good football team. The guy I like on the Browns is, believe it or not, Cream Hunt. <laughs> of all the guys that, that's that's really showing up is Cream Hunt. Uh, since he's uh, come back from his uh, suspension, he's just been um, putting up uh, flex numbers. I mean, you you can start him in your fantasy playoffs. So like if you if you got a flex spot, you could start him, especially against the Cardinals, who are uh, not looking that great to be honest. Um, so I don't know what your thoughts. We'll talk. I'll talk about the Cardinals after you put in your two cents about the Browns. Um, well, I well I hated your analogy. I, I get what you. Um, everything seems to they just keep kind of getting in their own way. Like they had a, I think they, they won last week, right? Yeah, they won last week, but. For whatever reason, Baker Mayfield comes out and criticizes the the way they handled uh, Odell's injury, which is strange. Um, yeah, I don't know. They they just constantly get in their own way, and it's it's a little disappointing because they they do they should be a decent fantasy team. I think my analogy was is that they sort of still stink. Yeah, yeah, they, they do. I can't really just say anything about that. But do you like Kareem Hunt? Yeah, Kareem Hunt. Um, he's he's good. He hasn't really taken away from Nick Chubb, which is a, I appreciate that, but. He is, he's good. Um, you know, just, he's the pass catching back there, but he still offers a little bit of upside on the ground as well. Or I guess I should say the other way. He does well on the ground, but he offers more of the pass catching upside, which is something that that offense kind of lacked, uh, since they traded Duke Johnson. Um, and yeah, he works out. He's flexible, like you said, but probably not much more than that. Well, I think he's more flexible than a guy like who's in a similar role like Tariq Cohn. Yeah, I, I think just because Kareem Hunt has they they re- use him in the red zone a lot, so he has touchdown upside. Kareem Hunt or Tariq Cohen really has no touchdown upside. Yeah. Now looking at the Cardinals side of it, um, uh, looks like that they pass the ball. Uh, they're letting Kyler Murray just uh, throw and throw, and but he's uh, Kyler Murray. He can have a good game now and again, scoring wise. They're still not winning games. Um, you get these long stretches of. Uh, uh, Christian Kirk with uh, uh, Christian Kirk has one big blow up game and then all of a sudden he just goes back in the tank. I th- this is the one thing about it. But I remember you showing me this video. I just want to talk about the backfield more in, in, in this case. I know David Johnson got a touchdown last week, but that was the first time he's done anything for weeks. But I don't know. It sticks in my head that one play that you uh, showed me about him. Mm-hmm. Uh, where he broke to the outside and it was just so slow and plodding that break to the outside. It was just no move or anything. He's not the David Johnson that we're used to seeing anymore. I think this is a Kenyon Drake backfield. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't even want to. I mean, Kenyon Drake's been the starter, but he's not someone I want to play anyways. Um, that being said, you know, he's the starter, so therefore he's going to get the most value by default. Um, but either way, I, yeah, like you said, I'm not interested in it at all. Um, I think the only players on the Cardinals offense I'm interested in are him or Kyler and then Christian Kirk, who's just been a target monster. Other than that, I'm kind of staying away from that running back backfield. Yeah. And I think, uh, Christian Kirk could have a good game against the Browns. The Browns are, uh, the Browns are pretty beatable. Don't, I, I wouldn't yeah. even, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I think, I think the Cardinals could even pull off an upset because, um, Kyler Murray and uh, I don't know Baker Mayfield. He's come on. I have to will say that Baker Mayfield's come on. Of course, against the Bagels, how how can you not you know do better? Sure. So, anyways, Jaguars at Raiders. Uh, Jaguars are a total mess. Raiders messy, but not as a not as much in a mess. Um, Josh Jacobs out. Um, looks like he's day to day. He looks like he's going to be probably back. For, for this game, so no need to rush out and chase the points with uh, uh, Washington. So uh, the only bright spot on the Jaguars, I think, right now is uh, is that Gardner Minshew is in there, and uh, Nick Foles was Nick Foles got pulled. So at least if you have DJ Chark or D Westbrook, you have uh, a chance. And against the Raiders, uh, I like I like the Jaguars' chances. So. D.D. Westbrook and D.J. Chark, yeah, you could start them. 
Uh, Leonard Fournette had a down game just, just at the right time for week 14 of the first week of fantasy playoffs, which a lot of people were howling in anger about that because he had a good week the previous week in week 13. But uh, it is what it is. Um, I like I like the Jaguars against the Raiders. And as for the Raiders themselves, well, I'll, you can, uh, I'll let you take it from there. Um yeah, the Raiders are hard to figure out. I mean, their receiving options are, are not good. Um, Derek Carr has not been very good. That being said, whoever the running back is, whether it's Josh Jacobs, DeAndre Washington, you're going to start them. And then Darren Waller is startable. So, like, it's very easy to make decisions on the Raiders. Like, they either start them or you don't start them. There's almost no consideration to be given. Yeah. Um, Pure matchup-based team. Though, uh, Derek Carr, I do believe – no, I, I'm going to just uh... – Check at the bottom of the thing. I think Derek Carr. Uh, no, he didn't make the top ten. But Derek Carr was ahead of a lot of quarterbacks last week. But um, against the Jaguars, yeah, it's just a good matchup for uh, the Raiders. I do believe Tyrell Williams is he out again or is he back in? Um, I think he played. Did yeah. Play? I mean, either way, like it's. I, I don't know how excited I am to start Tyrell Williams. No. Yeah, he played. He had 35 yards. I'm not yeah. starting Tyrell Williams. Yeah, Darren Waller's about the only one guy that's uh, safe-ish with touchdown and red zone potential. Uh, and again, Josh Jacobs, uh, you can start him if he's if he's if he's ready to play. He's he's obviously got a go-to guy. He's been good this year, so but he's been playing with uh, with a bad shoulder all all year, or a fractured shoulder as it uh, as it was all year. But uh, funny they would come out with that. But was it really a fracture? I believe so. I believe it was actually fra- how severe the fracture. Obviously, it's not that severe. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in there at all. It could be a hairline thing or something like that. I feel like a fractured shoulder is severe, no matter how you look at it. All right. That's the way I looked at it, too. But uh, apparently, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I did a double take myself when I thought, is this really a fracture? Yeah. I think it's a fracture. You can check me on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know. NFL players are crazy, man. Uh, so we see. I w- I want to get this right because if I'm thinking, if I'm getting it mixed up with another player, I don't want to do that and pass along to our listeners bad information because of my poor memory skills. So I'll just get that up for us right now. Josh Jacobs, here we are. I could I could see a lot of people listening to the podcast and saying, "You know, idiot, you should <laughs> you should brush up on your stuff before you get on the show." God, we can't we can't remember everything. Um, news, uh, Josh Jacobs to be inactive due to his shoulder injury. Uh, this was, uh, he was a game time decision. Uh, a broken shoulder. Yeah. He's played through his broker shoulder and since initially injuring it in week seven. Yeah. That's, that's, that's insane. Yeah. So, so there you are. So I was, uh, my memory isn't that bad. Falcons at 49ers, uh, going against the big boys, uh, 49ers at home. Uh, obviously, uh, start the, uh, start the 49ers, uh, defense. Um, Matt Ryan is bound to throw it into the hands of the opposition. (laughs) It's quite, in a game like this, because they're going to be chasing this game, I really feel. And, uh, uh, I don't know. It's another year where this is, I, I'm probably going to, I'll be talking about this, well, for running out of time, perhaps, because once we get talking about fantasy, Kev, we, we just uh, lather on about stuff. Um, it's my concerns about Julio Jones, as usual, uh, and the fantasy points you're trying to scrape for in the playoffs. Here's here's his, uh, here's Julio Jones. Uh, again, no touchdowns since week three, as usual. Um you know, you really, I, I like Julio Jones and everything, but in fantasy football, you need a receiver who gets the touchdowns. I know he's a great receiver, and he is. And now they're playing San Francisco, and you're, if you own him, you're starting him in your fantasy playoffs. But Kev, I, this is, uh, uh, he's, ju- he's just a guy that's very, very, a very tough start. Yeah, it's crazy to say that about Julio Jones, but given the matchup and his performance, he is a tough start. That being said, like we've said before, um, talent, you know, you start your talented players and you just hope for the best. Uh, I follow a guy on Twitter, um, shout out Coley, who had, I think he started Julio and Devontae Adams and had Emmanuel Sanders and AJ Brown on his bench. Oh, it's just, it's, that's just how it goes sometimes. Hang on a sec. Off we go. 
Right. Um, as for the 49ers side of things, Grapple had a big game against the Saints, as we know. Big shootout game. This could be another shootout, don't you think? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't know the Niners had it in them. I thought they were more with defense. I mean, the thing is, I think the Falcons offense isn't good enough. I think the Niners are going to stifle them. And I think it's it's not going to be a high-scoring game. It might be on the Niners side. It could get hilarious, the, the, you know, the Kyle Shanahan revenge game. But um, Niners at home. I mean, coming off an emotional win, I could see some of that playing in, but I, I think they're too good, and I think you know they're right in the thick of things. They can't afford to lose a game. Um, I, I don't see them losing this game to the Falcons, and I don't see the Falcons scoring a lot. No, and uh, Raheem Mustard must start. I did this last week. I said, Mustard the Mustard. Yeah, I mean, I, it's always going to be weird because you never. Uh, you never, you never know what the Niners are going to do with their backfield, but I think at this point, Mostert's kind of set, up, uh, set himself aside, right? I think it's hot hand. I think it's a hot hand matter for people. That's what it is. Who's ever got the hot hand? If it's Coleman, if it's Breda. Breda's always injured, though. So um, there's, the thing is, is that if you start Breda, well, he's going to go down in the first quarter. He's going to go down in the second quarter. So you, you're really taking a risk if you start Breda. I think Breda is the, is the scariest start. you got to hope that Breda scores a touchdown before he gets hurt in the game or something like that. It's been like that all season long. He gets dinged up and then he's out for a game and then he's back, you you know, or two or three or, you know, concussions, whatnot at all. I don't know what it comes down to. But obviously, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, um, he could be out. He could be in for another big game. Yeah. So he's kind of the fantasy star of the, of the season. Uh, Rams uh, at Cowboys. This is a real test for the Cowboys. Now, this is this is the game that Jerry Jones is like talking about, like gotta beat a team that's an over five hundred team, and this is Rams as such as they are. They've had a rough year, but you know the Rams have you know pulled it together, you know through their through their troubles. Like Jared Goff starting to look a little bit better, but Jared Goff's nowhere near the Jared Goff last year still. But he's he's better in recent weeks, and Robert Woods has picked it up. And I think they're going back to the offense that they that they did last year that they started having. I think they stuck with the Cooper Cup idea too long, and it it came back to bite them because teams started uh, preparing that way. But the Rams kept going w- with it because it was a winning formula. So they, you know, you you're talking about the Browns getting in their own way. I think the Rams sort of did the same thing a little bit by by not changing it up and going back to their you know the Robert Woods formula and having Cooper Cup as the secondary guy because I think they relied too much on uh, Cooper Cup in that in the uh, I guess in a sense the the WR run role he didn't quite fit that that scheme but now they yeah but, yeah go ahead I, mean, I think I think the important thing is that the Rams have gotten back to um, I mean they've gotten a couple guys healthy on their offensive line um, that was a huge part of their success last season and they've really handed Todd Gurley the ball a lot more. So yeah. that combined has kind of gotten back to their old tricks. It's made things easier for Jared Goff, and that's what we want to see. So um, I think it's um, – yeah, I think the Rams are kind of back to their old tricks. Yeah, they are. And uh, so I've noticed that they're they're doing quite well. But I, I do think the Cowboys – you've got to start your Cowboys in this game because the, the, Rams, uh, the Rams are beatable downfield. So I look for a good game for uh, – Amari Cooper and company down there. And, of course, you've always got Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield. And that's that's what, what really helps the Cowboys and Dak Prescott is when Ezekiel uh, is running well. Then, But it just seems like if Amari Cooper isn't healthy, which he's kind of not been healthy, I think this I think this plantar fascia thing, what he, whatever he's had, uh, I think it's been bothering him all season. He hasn't been quite right. I mean, yeah, he's been he's been a WR one in a lot of in a lot of games. He's been he's been just terrific. Getting away from the Raiders it was the best career move that uh, that ever happened for him. That uh, that the, the Cowboys traded for him. They traded a lot for him too, and they did and they did well. But I don't know how they're going to pay him next year. But that's another story. But um, yeah, I, this is. This is the game the Cowboys really want to show that they can beat a team. So uh, they'll put in the effort, but whether they can come through, I don't know. I mean, the Seahawks had troubles with the, the Rams' defense, and, you know, Russell Wilson's no slouch at quarterback. So, I mean, if you think uh, Dak Prescott has slightly better receivers than Russell Wilson, I would say slightly. But I don't know. Having said that, um, Tyler Lockett's been shut down, but. I don't know, thoughts on this Rams game, uh, the Cowboys side of things? Um, I think it, the Rams, again, not a defense. I'm, I'm avoiding it any, any way. I think it should be 
another shootout game, to be honest, high scoring game. I don't see why not. The Cowboys, uh, I think I saw I saw a t- stat on Twitter that they're the since 2000, they are the fourth. They gained the fourth most yards per game, but they score like pretty much an average team, 25 points a game with the other all the other teams that average that many. We're talking about like the 20. Um, what was it? The the undefeated Patriots. What was that? 2007, eight. Those Patriots, the the Peyton crazy uh, year where he had 55 yeah. touchdowns. Like the the Chiefs, like they get yardage on par with those teams, but they don't score as much. So uh, I don't know what that says about their play calling or whatever. But the point is that they can move the ball on whoever. And I think the Rams, if they're back to their old tricks, um, when they play, it should be a, a, a high scoring game. Yeah. Vikings at Chargers. Uh, there was a funny video of uh, I don't know if you saw it. Did you see it? The uh, of uh, Philip Rivers after he uh, threw that ninety yard touchdown to Austin Eckler. It was uh, he. He got pulled up by the uh, um, Jaguars defender, and he says ninety yards, to just shouting it in his ear. <laughs> ninety, <laughs> shouting it right in this big guy's ear, right, and just. I mean, he was lucky he didn't get decked. Like <laughs> uh, Philip Rivers puts his uh, life in his hands. So of course, you know the defender was smart, and he didn't. <laughs> unsportsmanlike conduct he could have easily but i mean even even the ref was saying gee that's kind of uh you know you're you're playing with fire there uh philip rivers you know, big dude but i don't know it was funny but uh philip rivers yeah uh here this could be a this could be a shootout type of game uh vikings uh uh kirk cousins could get his get his arm going in uh in uh in la it's it's, it's in la so it should be uh Chargers have got nothing to lose, so uh, I I, I want to hold my hand up and say to people like I was kind of down on Austin Eckler because of the rise of I wasn't expecting the rise of Melvin Gordon to be so much, and and uh, I saw Austin Eckler starting to slowly uh, disappear, so I automatically assume that that uh, I see that I can see the trend going towards uh, a little more and more and more towards Melvin Gordon, but. Uh, as football does, uh, Eckler exploded. So I guess he's startable, isn't he, Kev? Yeah, I mean, shoot, I don't know what's going on with the Chargers. Um, Eckler at times seems like one of the best backs in the league, and yet they keep going away from him. But uh, that being said, like you said, you saw saw his upside. I think you start him again this week and just, I don't know, just hope that they, they know what they're doing out there. Yeah, and uh, no worries about Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook is fine. Everybody was a little bit thought that he would get uh, scaled back because of a little because he's, ha- he's having this back problem. It is a bit of a concern, but eh, if the Vikings are putting him out there and playoffs are extinct, you can you can bet that Dalvin Cook will get full workload. No worries. A lot of people were rushing out to get Madison. I think he should still own Madison, but he's not as urgent as it seemed last week. So. Everybody can just calm down about uh, Dalvin Cook. He's fine. He'll uh, he'll put him up, and the Vikings aren't going to. Uh, they're in uh, they're in playoff mode right now, and uh, there there are teams breathing down their necks right now. So they really need to win. Like especially the Rams. The Rams are coming on strong, and the Vikings uh, really need to win. But the Chargers are in uh, spoiler mode, and they 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 have other ideas. So I like all I like you starting all your Vikings in this game. So. Um, I don't think, um, I don't think we are going to see anything of, uh, no, I don't even have him on the list here. He could be out for the, yeah, I don't have, I don't have him on the list. I think, I think the guy is, uh, still Stefan Diggs. Oh, definitely. I mean, with Adam Thielen out, you have to roll out Diggs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no worries about Diggs with Adam Thielen. Uh, I think he's, Adam Thielen is, is he out for the season? I think he's. No, I think, I think he'll be back for the playoffs or at least maybe even next week, but I think he might be, it's week to week with him. Yeah. Uh, Colts Saints. I think this is our Monday night game. And, uh, Monday nights have been not too bad lately. This is a pretty good matchup, actually. Uh, Saints looking to get back on track after a loss. And again, this could be a, this could be a one of your shootout games. Uh, well, with Marshawn Lattimore out, we've talked about that. Or, Mar- pardon me, Marcus. <laughs> Where did that name come from? Marcus Davenport. Lattimore is another guy. <laughs> uh, he just got back from injury. I think, he, I'm not sure if uh, Lattimore is uh, out. For, uh, anyways, he's another guy on the Saints. Uh, but the Colts, uh, uh, they have Marlon Mack back uh, from his hand injury. Um, but I, I don't, wasn't that weird that that little two game stint with Jonathan Williams for the Colts. I mean, people 
you know, suddenly he's droppable. Like you drop him like a stone. He was he was good for a couple of games. <laughs> now he's gone. So it's one of those weird things you see in fantasy football where you know a guy comes in, just does the job. How you th- feel about this game? Obviously, a game where the Saints are going to get under track. You like this one as a shootout too? I mean, I see. I feel like we're saying that about every single game. But um, to be honest, this one, I, I don't know. I don't think the Colts' offense. I think they should have some success, but some success. But I don't think it'll get turned up to a shootout. I think it'll just be you know your average 24, 21, 24, 27 type game. Are you trusting Zach Pascal? Yeah. Uh, the Saints give up the third most points to wide receivers. If T.Y. Hilton is out uh, with Paris Campbell going down to um, give me Zach Pascal. All right. Uh, and I guess uh, a lot of no-brainers, but, you know, I talked about Alvin Kamara. Um, is this the game that we're going to see Alvin Kamara show up? I, mean, I, I don't know. To be honest, who knows? I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know why the Saints aren't using him like they should. But if you have him, you're playing him and, and just hope for the best. Yeah, I don't understand because everyone's talking about, like, one of the first things I saw on Twitter was that uh, a game with 20, 96 total points in it, like against the – and and Alvin Kamara had, like, what, four fantasy points in a game like that. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't make sense. It's a strange season, man. Strange season. All right. Well, we're running uh, We're running a little bit late, but uh, it was good to get some uh, good fantasy because, I mean, this is kind of an important week, so it's, I don't mind going over a little bit. But uh, I've talked about uh, – um, our panic button guys, uh, my panic button guys, of course, is Le'Veon Bell, and not because of the bowling thing. I want to make that clear right now. It's just that Le'Veon Bell, I just don't think there's, I think there's a little bit more problem. I don't think he's playing for the Jets next year. Um, I think they're going to move on from him, uh, or he's going to move on from them. It's one of those, it's one of those things that I, for him to go out bowling and stuff like that, um, mine's not on football with, with the Jets, obviously. I mean, I, I don't know what their players' lives are like and everything, but I don't know. It, it just when I hear about the thing like the bowling story and and the way the season has gone for him uh, and people not getting the fantasy value they kind of expected from him, which I, well I did. I didn't expect he'd get. Uh, I didn't expect he'd be a valuable player, but uh, I'm not trusting him in the fantasy playoffs. I'm not trusting him in this next game against the uh, the Ravens for sure, obviously. But, and uh, so he's he's my uh, panic button. Are you ready with your panic button? You want me to give my second one that I've already mentioned about because it'll be very um, brief. You can go ahead. go ahead. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna revert. My other panic button is Julio Jones. You have to start him, as we mentioned um, in the game. Uh, the fantasy points are just not there. He needs a touchdown. Um, and against the 49ers, oh, what a rough start. But the targets are there. Um, Calvin Ridley out uh, might help, but I think it actually kind of helps somebody like Russell Gage. He's actually a sleeper. So um, there we are. Um, anybody you're panicking on, Kev? Uh, yeah, so guy I'm panicking on, Tyler Lockett. Um, I know he's coming back from injury, so it, it, it's kind of hard to blame him for you know being disappointing. But that being said, if you take out, I mean, Lockett is you know gets a lot of hype for being a wide receiver one. I think he was drafted wide receiver something like fourteen this season, and he's put up pretty good stats this season. But if you look deeper, um, he's got two games where he combined for sixty points basically and outside of that um he hasn't scored over 14.5 points in any game so he's consistent he won't kill you but he's not really doing much um last four games he's totaled uh just over 15 total points so not exactly getting it done going into the stretch run for the playoffs he's got two really good matchups at cardinal uh at carolina and then home versus arizona um i think you play him but i'm worried about him Mm. Anybody else? Um, a guy that we've talked about a little bit. I mean, he's quarterback. What is this? Quarterback seven on the season, mm-hmm. which is kind of surprising. But Kyler Murray, um, back-to-back games under fifteen fantasy points. Uh, he just kind of looks. And I hate to say it because this is the draft knock on him. He just looks small. Like if he seems, he is. <laughs> He's yeah, 5'10". yeah. I mean, that's why I hate to say it because it seems <laughs> like I don't want to be the guy who just you know says you know. Uh, he, he's not good because he's small, but if he's not rushing, he's actually not that great of a passer. Um, he's had one, two, three, four, five games with zero passing touchdowns this season. And then in every other game, he's had multiple. So he's very inconsistent. Uh, I don't really know how I feel about him against Cleveland this week. Uh, Cleveland's defense isn't great, but he's not playing well either. So 
Um, mm. It almost comes down to, is he going to be able to run the ball or is he going to get some rushing yards on them? And that would float his floor a little bit. But for the QB7 to not be a, a like clear-cut starter in the fantasy in week 15 of the fantasy season is a little bit worrisome. Uh, just here's a trivia question. Who's the next shortest after Kyler Murray? Uh, in the NFL right now? Yeah. It's not Russell? It's Russell. Hey. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, you should be on Jeopardy. Anyway, uh, uh, moving on up. Um, Drew Locke uh, has got a good connection with N- Noah Fant. I like Noah Fant now for your fantasy playoffs. Uh, he's he's really coming on. Drew Locke has been finding him. Uh, like, I mean, I would even say moving on up uh, Drew Locke. Drew Locke is uh, – Drew. Locke, I, I, I would even say would, – would you try Drew Locke in uh, – in your uh, in DFS, yeah. in DFS, uh, I would have I guess to see the Chiefs, Bison, but but maybe I mean I don't know. Um, the Chiefs' defense has been playing really well. I'll just say that. Mm, right. Uh, even in the secondary, even in the secondary, the Chiefs' defense is is a good unit somehow. Huh. I, I don't know how it happened, but they're they're pretty good. Um, they, I mean, holding Tom Brady to whatever they did, it, it's not as as good as it used to be. But um, they've been they've been playing well, and I think the week before they played, and who did they play the week before that they did really well against too? Uh, the well, they played. I haven't got it. I want to say the Chargers. No, they played. Uh, yeah, so they played. Uh, Brady last week held them twelve points uh, and one touchdown. Derek Carr the week before, uh, one touchdown as well, two interceptions. Phil Rivers the week before that, one touchdown, four picks. Um, and then, you know, they, up until that point, they weren't great. But if you go back and look at their logs, they get kind of outside of these last three games, they kind of get shredded by good quarterbacks like Deshaun Watson at 280 and a touchdown, but two mm-hmm. picks too. Stafford, 291 and three touchdowns. Rodgers, 305, three touchdowns. Kirk Cousins, 202. 220 to three touchdowns, but against a like a quote unquote bad quarterback like Drew Locke, you know I'm not worried like about starting the Kansas City defense against Drew Locke. No, especially because Drew Locke, like yeah, he came out he was okay in week in his week against the Chargers, but last week honestly was not a real game. I don't know what happened with the Texans, but I think you take that result and you can throw it out the window because the Texans didn't come to play. No, I, I suppose not, but I mean uh, results still are results, right? I mean I hate this. You don't you always. You know, you take away this touchdown. I mean, what are we gonna do? Take away Eckler's touchdown? You know what I mean? It's it's. I mean, the score still stands. I mean, I guess if you're looking for a a mean, you take away the worst perform. I guess the thing is, what you should do if you're gonna take away a big play, you got to take away a worst play as well. Well, I'm not trying to take plays away or anything like that. I just uh, do. You think Drew Locke is 300 and not? I mean, it's the Daniel Jones thing. Like it is had one great game. Like you can't really judge him off of the one great game. It's no. probably easier to judge him off of. Oh, he's a he's a second round, third round pick who's a rookie starting in his third NFL game. Like I'd rather judge him like that. I uh, know, yeah, but you're right because uh, Daniel Jones started going down because defenses started getting defenses start examining the video, right? Yeah, that's a thing too. And so there's not a lot of video on Drew Locke, so defenses aren't as prepared. So now defenses, that's why Daniel Jones started declining, because they knew his weakness is that he's loose with the football. So what do they do? Uh, defenses say, you know, go after his loose hand. When he's he's loose with the football, go after it. And what are they doing? They're getting success from that. So that's what they do. Uh, defenses, they they watch the film, and they know the weaknesses. They know how to get them. Those coaches are pretty smart. Uh, my other guy, of course, I've mentioned him is OJ Howard, only for the fact that Mike Evans is out, and there's really nobody, nobody else behind him. I mean, you mentioned Perryman. <laughs> I'm not too keen on him, but I think this is, like you say, these are the guys that tend to shine that you've drafted him. But I don't know, he's worth a he's worth a try. Uh, I he's he's still a nervous try because of, I don't know what it is about Bruce Arians. He's kind of like well, he's not like Andy Reid, but. Uh, in some respects, he, he's kind of cranky about players. So um, he's he's so quick to put guys in the doghouse, like Ronald Jones the other day, uh, the other week. So it, and you can't trust uh, you can't trust um, Bruce Arians' teams so, uh, for fantasy, but uh, except for uh, the main players. So, uh, but I still say OJ Howard's moving on up. And if you want to, uh, he's very startable in your considering how tight ends have been up and down and all on all around. So, uh, uh, who you got? Uh, we're moving on up. Just uh, another tight end 
Tyler Higby, back-to-back games with seven targets, 100 yards. Seems like he's really a part of that offense. I don't know what's going on with Cooks. I don't know why Cooks, uh, Cup is having such a small target snap share. But, I mean, while it's going, like, I'm going to start Higby in one of my playoff matchups this week. Um, you know, might as well. If, if the numbers are there, it's kind of hard for me to deny them. Yeah, I like him. With Gerald Everett out, he's, he's, been, he's, he's just soared. Yep. And my other guy is someone that everyone knows is moving on up, but A.J. Brown, can't say enough about him. Um, yeah. He's just a monster. He has a good rapport with Tannehill. He's clearly a cut above everyone else in that wide receiving core. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, A.J. Brown, yeah, part of the meat package from Ole Miss with D.K. Metcalf, right? <laughs> Those guys have got meat on them, man. I you, uh, Did you see that picture with the between him and, like, comparison to Chris Collinsworth and his rookie <laughs> No, I didn't. It was hilarious. Uh, 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 like Chris Collinsworth looks like kind of like a 90-pound weakling. Like, and Chris Collinsworth was a great receiver in his day, but I don't know. These days, you know, the guys with meat are the guys you want. Like, in and it takes they sure know how they sure make them dig out of Ole Miss. That's for sure. So I'll be looking. Any, uh, they probably I don't know what it is. They got a good training facility here on there anyway. Yeah, prime meat. Uh, Brown and Metcalf. Uh, they're gonna. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Next year, Brown and Metcalf are going to be uh, sought after uh, fantasy targets, big time, big time. Agree? Definitely. Um, I mean, I think the whole wide receiver class. Like, you get the second year bump. They're already so impressive rookies. Mm. That second year bump is is gonna be good. What's your thoughts though on the other rookie, uh, Hollywood? What's your? How do you feel about Hollywood? Does he does he belong in the in the class of greats? Uh, does he? Uh, I, yeah, he's a talented playmaker. Um, I just think he's not um, he's not probably as far advanced as them, and it might be because they don't need him to be. Uh, like the Ravens, as good as they are, only throw the ball 20 times a game, and probably half of those go to tight ends. So, um, you know, Hollywood in another offense might be more consistent, but right now he's almost like a boom bust option. Yeah, yeah, he is. I prefer right now. I prefer AJ over Hollywood Definitely. of the Browns, <laughs> so to speak. Anyways, that is our show, ladies and gentlemen. A long, long episode, but I think it was well worth it because we are in fantasy semifinals. I uh, want to say a shout out to uh, our good friend Jonathan Chan once again. Uh, we'll hope, hopefully, he'll be back for when uh, we do our uh, uh, our season wrap ups and uh, our awards ceremonies and so forth uh, with uh, our fantasy awards. I like the fantasy awards show, don't you, Kev? Yeah, it's one of our best of the year. Yeah, so that'll be coming up after the playoffs, and and uh, but we're getting into Christmas time, so we hopefully uh, we'll keep uh, steady on the shows for uh, our fantasy people. So thank you for joining us for uh, coming home. I'm Richard Seville, FantasySixPack.net. Join us again next week in the finals week on uh, the Fantasy Edge. Take care, everybody, and good luck. <laughs>